Hello everyone, it's that time again. As we approach the end of the year, it is time to announce the winners of the second annual World Film Geek Awards. Out of over 130 films selected with lots of thinking and appreciation, these are the select films who deserve their accolades for providing some great entertainment. So without further ado, here are this year's winners. We'll begin with our acting and directing awards. And the first award we are giving out is the Breakout Star Award. This year's Breakout Star is an actor and filmmaker from South Africa who has made his way from humble beginnings with a dream. With two feature films released and a short film that deserve international recognition this year, it is my honor to announce that this year's Breakout Star Award goes to... Cameron Scott, who's worked in Triggered, The Kissing Booth 3, and the Ring of Beasts have earned him the breakout star of 2021. Congratulations, Cameron. Next up is the Best Supporting Male Performance. This year's Best Supporting Male Performance was a tough one throughout the months. However, a late arrival came in October as he transitioned from his expertise in comedy to stepping in the footsteps of a cult horror icon. That icon is Russ Thorne. And the movie is Slumber Party Massacre. And the actor who deservedly wins this award is Rob Van Vuren, who did his research to take on the role of Thorn, the driller killer, in the reboot of the 1982 classic. Congratulations to Rob Van Vuren, this year's Best Supporting Male Performance. Next up is the Best Supporting Female Performance. This year's Best Supporting Female Performer narrowly beat out a few worthy contenders. However, her role of the woman responsible for changing an assassin's ways with the ultimate goal of falling in love with her deserves her win for Best Supporting Female. As Tomoe, the woman who made the former Batosai Kenshin Himura find a new meaning in life, Kasumi Arimura's performance in Ronin Kenshin The Beginning is one that has to be worthy of an award-winning performance. Congratulations goes out to Ms. Arimura for earning the Best Supporting Female performance of 2021. Next up is the Best Lead Male Performance. This year's Best Lead Male Performance goes to one actor who released two films this year. While his latest shows off a dual personality of sorts, it is, film, it is his film that was released earlier this year that earns him the award. As a man released from prison, his longing for a normal life and getting by is threatened when he turns into the people responsible for his imprisonment. Tempers Flair and our protagonist, played by this actor, brings an emotionally charged performance. The film is taking the fall, and the winner is Monroe Chambers, who rightfully deserves this award. Congratulations to Monroe Chambers as this year's best lead male performance of 2021. Next up, we have the best lead female performance. This was a tough one because there were quite a few major contenders for this award. However, one actress really upped her game as she played a character that teased the audience one way, only to show her true nature as the film progressed. This was quite a surprise as it involves a horror film with a group of protagonists who looked out for one thing in mind. The leader of that group deserves the award for her combination of potential screen queen and total badassery. This year's best female performance goes to... Hannah Ganera as Dana in the reboot of Slumber Party Massacre. Congratulations to Hannah Ganera as the best female performer of 2021. Next up is the award for Best New Director. This year, we have a tie for the Best New Director Award. Like last year, these two filmmakers made excellent directorial debuts, and would you believe that one is a former child star and one is an animator who brings a style to a semi-auto biopic. Our first Best New Director is Mika Burum, whose comedy Hollywood.com is a satire of Hollywood norms within the studio industry. The second Best New Director is Hunter Hopewell, whose comedy Shellfish is about an animator who wants to make a feature film about his experiences. These two deserve some recognition, and it's because of these two's hard work that made them fun films to watch. Congratulations goes out to Mika Burum and Hunter Hopewell as the Best New Directors 
of 2021. Finally, to wrap up the Acting and Directing Awards, we have the Best Director Award. And this year's Best Director Award is rightfully earned by a filmmaker who had first thought of rebooting a cult classic, took a very smart approach. Not only did she pay homage to the original, but she flipped the script on certain tropes and hands down made one of the best reboots today. She deserves this award. And it is none other than... Danishka Esterhazy with Slumber Party Massacre. Danishka's hard work with this reboot has paid off as she is the best director of 2021. We now are going to unleash the film awards. And this year, we're kicking off our film awards with a brand new award the Best LGBTQ Film Award. This is an award for a film that's either LGBTQ-centric or has important LGBTQ characters within the film. This year's inaugural winner goes to a film about a struggle with identity. With some very close contenders, a late entry has emerged in the form of a young man forced to choose between happiness and his family's traditional values. It starts off as a romance, followed by a shocking twist, and then finally the aftermath. The first LGBTQ film award goes to Gita Giselle's heartwarming and emotional film, Beto. Congratulations to the cast and crew of this excellent film. You have earned the best LGBTQ film of 2021. Next up, we have our best WTF film. So who's going to join Tokyo Homestay Massacre, last year's winner, as the inaugural WTF of 2021? This was a tough one. It was between three heavy contenders. One, a Canadian film about a bloodthirsty alien forced under the control of a precocious preteen. Two, a Nicolas Cage film where he not only doesn't talk, but beats the bejesus out of some animatronic nightmares. And three, a South African film about a drug addict whose life is turned upside down when he is abducted by aliens. With Cage narrowly beating out the other two out, it's safe to say that this year's WTF film is Willy's Wonderland, where we get to see Nick suck down energy drinks, play pinball while dancing, not talking one word, and beating the crap out of a group of possessed animatronic characters in an abandoned Chuck E. Cheese-like playroom. Congratulations to Willy's Wonderland, the best WTF film of 2021. Next up is our best short film. Having seen a few short films this year, including a trio of horrific horror films at this year's Spooky Empire Convention. However, one short film really stood out. Originally conceived as a film about dogfighting, the film ultimately took the Ramus and Remus legend and spun it into a stellar film about brothers turned rivals in a deadly fight. The short film is South Africa's Ring of Beasts, directed by Adriano Miguel, and was written, produced, and co-stars this year's breakout star, Cameron Scott. Scott plans to expand the legend from short film to series. So congratulations goes out to The Ring of Beasts, the best short film of 2021. Next up is the best foreign film. Like last year, we have a tie for this year's best foreign film. Two films really stood out on the international front. The first is part of a two-part Japanese epic, considered one of the best, if not the best, live-action manga and anime adaptations out there. The other is a wild and wacky joyride through Cape Town, South Africa, through the eyes of an alien who has taken possession of the body of a local drug addict. The two films are Rurouni Kenshin, The Final, and Fried Berry, the two best foreign films of 2021. Next up, we have our Best Western Film. No, not the hotel chain, but this is the award for Best Western. This year's winner features an unrecognizable actor who plays an outlaw protecting a female journalist in a lawless area. The film is Justin Lee's Apache Junction, which stars Stuart Townsend, Scout Taylor Compton, and country star Trace Atkins as the mastermind antagonist who runs the lawless titular area. A pretty good story of redemption that flips the script of sorts, but it's still really good. Congratulations to Apache Junction, the best Western film of 2021. Next up is our best sci-fi film. This year's best sci-fi film goes to our neighbors to the north, Canada. 
this film about a group of friends and scientists who come across the possibility of opening a portal to a multiverse. The ensemble cast are excellent in this film, from Paloma Kwiatowski's returning protagonist to this year's winner for Best Lead Male Performance, Monroe Chambers, playing both a good and bad guy in this film. The winner is Garoth says Seth's Multiverse, and it wins the Best Sci-Fi Film of 2021. Next up is our Best Documentary Film. This year, some really good documentaries came out. However, there's one that caught more attention than the others. How far are you willing to get your name out there in the world of entertainment? We'll ask Jessica Watkins, a stand-up comic who literally walked cross-country and performing on stage while going through the rigors of both nature and her past demons. The film is specialish, and it rightfully deserves the best documentary film of 2021. Next up is the best drama film. There have been some powerful dramas released this year, but one stood out above the rest due to the lead actor's emotional performance, which elevated to a level that needs to be seen. In Taking the Fall, Munro Chambers earned his best lead male performance award in the role of Thomas, a man who was released from prison after serving an eight-year sentence. It is at a celebratory dinner party where tensions eventually boil and Thomas finds himself having no other choice but to confront his past in relation to why he was sent to prison in the first place. The supporting cast helps support that emotional edge for Chambers, and this is why Taking the Fall wins Best Drama of 2021. Next up is our Best Comedy Film. There are films that provide some laughs this year, some more prominent than others. This year's best comedy goes to a live-action adaptation of a video game. No, people, we're not talking about Mortal Kombat. The film is Werewolves Within, the story of a new small-town sheriff who discovers a series of murders, and it may be the work of a werewolf. The comedy portion comes in when the town folks are all suspects, and their accusations of each other are more hilarious than dark. Sam Richardson and Milana Vaintrub lead the way with their comic timing and this is why Werewolves Within wins the best comedy of 2021. Next up is the best action film. This was one of the toughest decisions to make as there were a lot of action films out this year. However, one film really stood out and put the stamp on an epic franchise. While a prequel was released afterwards, this quote unquote final film showcase some exhilarating sword fights of epic proportions, all complementing the emotional aspect of the film, which pits a heroic ex-assassin against his former brother-in-law, who is hell-bent on revenge. The film is Ruronin Kenshin The Final, with Kenji Tanagaki's frenetic fight choreography and excellent performances by both Takaru Sato and Mockingyu. This film rightfully wins the best action film of 2021. Next up is our best horror film. This year provided plenty of scares from all over the world. The winner of this year's best horror film is also the biggest surprise of the year. A reboot of a 1980s cult classic, this came out of nowhere when it was announced. The film's release earned a lot of positive rave for not only paying homage to the original, but adds a taste of flipping the script and bringing a shocking twist in the third act. The film has already won three awards so far, and with that, here is award number four for Slumber Party Massacre, the best horror film of 2021. And finally, we have the best overall film winner, which will also be the number one film of 2021 in this year's top 20. The film has edged out some major competition as the film output was getting better and better. Just when one film was set to be best overall film, one film narrowly edged it out by a hair. Literally. So who's the winner? Was well, the original tagline had put it. You know the drill. This year's best overall film is... Slumber Party Massacre. Congratulations to the cast and crew who made this not only one of the best remakes in recent years, but one of the best remakes, period. So congratulations to Slumber Party Massacre, the best overall film of 2021. Let's once again congratulate not only the winners of this year's awards, 
But let's once again congratulate the members of this year's Hall of Fame as they have earned their rightful spots as the second class. Raina Swart, Dick Moss, Felissa Rose, Bill Oberst Jr., Eric Jacobus, and the late Brad Allen deserve their recognition for their hard work. And once again, welcome to the World Film Geek Hall of Fame. And before we put an end to the World Film Geek Awards, I would like to officially announce the first inductee into the 2022 Hall of Fame. And this is an actor who really deserves it. With a prolific career spanning five decades, this actor is perhaps known for his collaborations with Andy Warhol, as well as his work in supporting roles with the likes of Madonna, Jim Carrey, and Wesley Snipes to name a few. However, in 2021, he gained major rave for his role of an LGBTQ icon in Patrick Pitzenbarger in Todd Stevens' film Swan Song. It is an honor to announce that the first inductee of the 2022 World Film Geek Hall of Fame is the legendary Udo Kier. A big congratulations goes to Udo Kier as the first member of the third class of the World Film Geek Hall of Fame. And there you have it, everyone. This has been a wonderful year, and here's to an even bigger 2022. I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. See you in 2022.